so far as I'm concerned, and I think I can speak for the CCM on this, we consider the press to be a critical component of our democratic process. I believe that the fundamental question that Nivisions have to ask themselves, two years on, two years and a little bit on into this NRP administration, is a question that I raised in an edition of last week's, one of the papers last week, The Observer, uh, and I think it's a question that's asked the world over. And every person here, every member of the press here, every person outside there who's listening to us must ask themselves, do you feel that you're better off today in Nevis than you were two years ago? And if the answer to that, do your soul searching. I'm not even asking you to answer me. You must look, you must look at your paycheck, you must look at your bills, you must look at the price of gas, what you're paying for electricity, what you're paying for water, what you're paying in the supermarket for food. And you must ask yourself, are you better off under this administration than you were? Because at the end of the day, whatever we wish to say, that's where the rubber meets the road. People are interested in their quality of life and their standard of living. We don't get any substantive ideas, any substantive discussion. We get hype. And when you say, well, let's look beyond the hype to see, is there any substance, you get cussing. They're very, very good at that. And speaking here for myself, I am a recipient of the most cussing that any politician, I believe, in Nevis or St. Kitts has ever got. Because it seems to me that this is, there is a department, it seems, in government called the Brantley Department. And they recruit as many people as they can to cuss in that department. Because there is no attempt, there is no effort to discuss anything substantive. There is no debate on issues. When one looks at the economy in Nevis today, one has to wonder, and again I go back, are you better off? Are the businesses better off when we hear businessmen of long standing in the community saying that they're having to close earlier than normal because they're concerned about crime? Banks were indicating that they want their staff out of the banks earlier than normal because they're concerned about crime. How on earth are you going to grow a tourism product? How are you going to grow an economy if you cannot get a handle on the fear the crime which then leads to fear that is out there in the public. And I agree with the Honorable Van Samer, and I have said in other, forum, in other forums that I am not inclined to politicize the issue of crime. But the government must lead. They must lead and they must have the assurance that the opposition isn't here to politicize the issue, but rather to work with them. And so far, and I don't think that I'm speaking out of turn to say that so far, all efforts on our part to have dialogue, to have discussion, to have meetings have failed. And I want to go on record as saying that the NRP government in Nevis needs to understand that it cannot go it alone on the issue of crime. It has no monopoly on ideas. I don't even know if it has ideas. The bottom line is it must recognize that only through partnership between government and opposition, private sector, church, school, and the home, only through partnership can we seek to fashion solutions to this problem. And the NRP continues in its own way to politicize this issue because it continues to refuse the entreaties of the opposition to get together to solve it. And it seems to me that people are concerned about turf and who's in charge and who's not in charge. And the honest to goodness truth is that the next one of us who has a gun put in our face is hardly concerned with that. We are concerned with security. And if there's any role and any function of government, it is the security of our people. And while I have stressed the NRP, I'm not proposing for a minute to let the federal government off the hook, because they too have a constitutional responsibility to Nevis and to the people of St. Kitts and Nevis. And as the Honorable Van Samer has indicated, we've had 13 murders already, an average of two murders per year. It puts us, two, two murders per month, I'm sorry. It puts us in the upper echelons of murders and violent crime in the world, not just in the Caribbean, in the world on a per capita basis. And I think that we need to start to address it. Last year, in the budget debate on in the federal level, I said that in my view, the budget ought to have been a crime budget. That the prime minister ought to have focused his energies and focused the resources of the country on fighting crime. Head on, all out assault and crime. And I was roundly condemned, I was castigated. Suggestions, for example, that we ought to have security at the sea bridge docks in St. Kitts and on Nevis. I was roundly castigated in Nevis and St. Kitts. But I don't profess to be a soothsayer nor a prophet, but we've seen certain things come to pass. Some may say these are times, signs of the end. I like to say I don't want the end to come too soon. 
And I believe that we, by our efforts jointly, we have the will, we have the intellectual capacity, we have the goodwill, that reservoir of goodwill that we can tap into to make our country safer and better. But the opposition can only speak. We have no ability to direct. We can only speak, we can only encourage, we can only invite. And so I think we echo again, we reiterate again, that we are ready, willing, and able, armed with our own ideas, to lay us with and cooperate with the government, both at the local and federal level, to confront this issue. I don't believe I can be any clearer than that. The cost of living. We all remember that the NRP campaigned vociferously on a cost of living platform, that they would bring down the cost of living. To the contrary, and again I go back, are you better off than you were two years ago? Is your paycheck able to buy what you used to be able to buy? Because what we have in Nevis is a phenomenon where the pay isn't going up very much, but the cost of living is going through the roof. And I think that we as a people need to critically evaluate what it is the government has done in relation to that. As leader of the opposition in the federal parliament, I've written to both the prime minister and the honorable premier, asking again for a sit down and asking that we reach out to our regional and international economists, people like that, to see whether or not there were solutions that we could fashion in the immediate term and also in terms of the long term to handle and deal with this cost of living. Those letters would have gone, I believe, two months ago. I have, not had, I have not had the courtesy of an acknowledgement that those letters have been received. And again, it demonstrates that so far as they are concerned, they can do it alone. They have a monopoly on ideas. They have a monopoly on, 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 on wisdom, and they can do it alone. And that is clearly not the case. We look at the issue of geothermal. A lot of hype, a lot of talk. And the CCM has been castigated for not having done anything. I am very happy that the former Premier and leader of the opposition in Nevis, the Honorable Van Samy, has been able today to bring with him his budget from 2005, the budget for 2006, but read in December of 2005. And I don't know what clearer evidence the people of Nevis would have needed than that. So when we hear government ministers getting up and saying not a word was ever said about geothermal, it perhaps is due to the fact that I believe the then lone member of the opposition, the Honorable Joseph Perry, was very real in the House. And so he might not have heard. And then there are people who perhaps weren't listening, and so they would not have heard. But I am aware that this was a process because I was involved with it. It went on for some time, and the Honorable Van Samy is absolutely correct. It was a deliberate, careful, step-by-step -step process, not a mad headlong rush, as we saw. And the Nevis people have to evaluate for themselves that the NRP took power on July 10th, 2006. By January of 2007, they already had an exclusive deal with West Indies Power. And you must ask yourself, why? How come? What analysis went into that deal? And for me, what is most critical, who advised the Nevis Island administration? Who provided the technical advice, the financial advice, the scientific advice? And I believe that you will come to the conclusion, as I have, that the Honorable Junior Minister Carl L. Powell advised himself. And so we had a deal done in January of 2007 with Nevis's resource. And then in July of 2008, 18 months later, we came to Parliament basically to pass the law to allow you to do what you already did 18 months earlier. Now you talk about putting the cart before the horse or closing the barn door after the horse has bolted, however you wish to put it. The bottom line is that this is exactly what has happened. When you look at the geothermal bill that was trumpeted by the government as the most important piece of legislation that we have seen in Nevis, and you wonder why it is there was no public consultation on the bill. Why it is you introduce a bill of that magnitude and that importance and you rush through first, second, and third reading in one day. And people in the opposition, like the Honorable Van Samy, who was unavoidably away, couldn't be given an opportunity to come look at the bill, evaluate it, and come into Parliament, bearing in mind that this is a resource that is critical to the people of Nevis. I think that there is a lot about this deal that raises questions. And when any investor is going to say to me that they cannot disclose who their financial backers are, the Honorable Premier, former Premier, I'm sorry, said that he heard bells. Well, I hear alarm bells because I think that these are things that we as a people need to start to look at. We are not any longer living in the 18th century. This is the information age. 
and that Nevisions and, and, the, and the, the, the geothermal resource which belongs to the people of Nevis is now in the hands of people whom we don't even know. 